Hi, I'm here today with Elio Schachter, Editor-in-Chief for the Encyclopedia of Microbiology. We're going to talk a little bit about the Encyclopedia and some of the other books that he's published with Elsevier. My first question is about the cross-disciplinary nature of microbiology research. You can have a marine biologist easily talk to a food microbiologist, and you can have one microbiologist talking about evolution and the other one talking about pathogens. How does the encyclopedia fit the needs of this growing world of cross-disciplinary research? Well, first of all, it's lovely that this is happening. Uh, microbiology is not just a little specialty off in a corner. It's an integrative science. It brings together a tremendous amount of various interests. So that it's quite right, like what you said is correct. People from different aspects of microbiology can talk to each other very easily. And the encyclopedia does that. The encyclopedia has uh, covers all these uh, fields, but in almost every case, the individual chapters address those questions. They see it from the same uh, central point of view. The encyclopedia itself consists of nearly 300 entries. Uh, it's compiled into six volumes. Why amass such a mountain of content when we've got Google and Wikipedia, journal articles, textbooks? Sure. sure. Well, it's a good question, and uh, the facts are that you're not going to find all this information handy so that you can grab it off the shelf and open it up. Uh, also, there, there are other issues. Google is a wonderful thing. I, I use it a lot, but Google is it's sort of uh, uneven. You, uh, some chapters are terrific, some chapters are less so, some chapters are long, some chapters are short. There is not an overall guiding principle because anybody can put anything they want in Google. Whereas here, this has been edited and it's been thought through. There was a terrific board of editors that really world experts who looked at everything. And so there is a coherence uh, that makes it much more useful, I think. Definitely, exactly. So what is one of the most recent microbiological events that have impacted the state of modern microbiology? Um, do you address it in the encyclopedia? Well, I certainly hope so. <laughs> the, um, the main thing that you can point to is the advent of genomics, that is the ability to determine the genetic sequence of a lot of organisms. And it happens that because bacteria have smaller genomes, and for other reasons, there are many more microbial genomes than there are uh, that of, of higher, uh, higher right. organisms. So uh, this is tremendously useful in a variety of ways. It points, it, it shows itself up in almost anything you do in microbiology. But genomics is almost a microbial science. So you can't, in fact, anybody who does genomics has become a microbiologist. So of course this is throughout, you find this throughout the, the chapters in the encyclopedia as well you would in anything modern and up to date. Who do you see as the target audience for the encyclopedia? Well, it's a good question. I think that anybody, almost anybody who walks the streets ought to know something about microbiology. And they can look it up because a lot of the chapters are fairly specialized, but they all have a nice introduction and you can find out. So I would say besides, obviously, microbiologists can use it, but anybody in the biological sciences and elsewhere. It turns out that microbes influence our planet in ways that are unbelievable, so that a geologist has to know about microbiology, a meteorologist has to know about microbiology, and there are others, I mean, historians, lawyers, engineers, you name it, anybody can use it. Exactly. In early 2011, you're publishing two more books with Elsevier. Eukaryotic Microbes is one, and the other is Environmental Microbiology. Both are derived from the encyclopedia. Uh, how do you envision these books um, impacting the microbiology field? Well, it turns out that, in my humble opinion, the, the Encyclopedia of Microbiology is a treasure trove. It has a tremendous number of chapters that are very useful. So somebody had a bright idea, not me, to lump them together, to take together the chapters that belong to a certain field. And since uh, it's clear that there are very good chapters that are written by authorities, they are written in a very coherent way. It seems to me that this is a fairly logical development. You can make a book out of anything. And in some cases, there really aren't books that are comparable. In the field of eukaryotic microbes, which is things like protozoa and yeast and little algae, uh, there isn't really a book that holds it all together. And in environmental microbiology, there's a lot of development. But again, I, I think that this is going to be a pretty, pretty special project. 
Um, having edited numerous microbiology books. Uh, yes, I have. Yes, you have. <laughs> Do you see any gaps in uh, microbiology that you would like to fill? And oh, I don't. I don't ask me to think of another book. <laughs> <laughs> I got enough on my plate. Uh, but no, I I think that there is always a, there's always room for more. Uh, but I suppose that the new modalities and maybe even social media uh, will belong in, in the way people are going to communicate. They do belong already in ways people communicate. And so I think that if I were Elsevier, I think along those lines. Thank you. You're welcome. And thank you for your time.